Let's just record, I guess. All right. Let me just want to see if this one person asked me if, hold on. Okay. That and the last place someone messaged me. Let me see. And cool. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. So I was just telling some people in here real quick. The reason I did this is because when I was getting my supervision, um, I had a supervisor who I wasn't working for her clinic or anything, and she did it for me for free. I offered to pay her, and she was like, look, just pay it forward to someone else later. So I'm here now paying it forward and making sure that you guys are going to pass this test because um, I just passed and just found out last week. And feels really good to pass and know you're done with it. So I want you guys all to be there too. Um, first of all, let me just tell you one quick thing um, as to why I'm so sure that anyone on here can pass right now. Um, which I know ethically I shouldn't be making statements, right? That I can't promise or anything of that sort. But really, really quick story is I was supposed to take the test last February, February 2016, and God obviously had other plans for me. Um, I have lupus and I have Raynaud's, like really poor circulation in my fingers. So I got my gallbladder out last October. I was just really sick and that led to like six months of hell. They didn't cover my hands in the operation. So my fingertips froze. Like I had three fingertips like decomposing in front of me. Um, I've since had to have them amputated. But with that being said, that happened to me that February. I still took the test and I passed it on the first time. That means if you study correctly, like my fingertips were literally coming off in front of me and I was so drugged for so many of the months, I thought I was like permanently stupid that I could never take a test again. And I thought like my career in this was over, like my health. But like, if that does not serve or increase your MO to some effect, I don't know what will, but that really should because, and I didn't say that story for pity of any sort. It's just because I'm like, if I did that, like without my hands working, without anything of a sort, like you could pass this test. So let me just make sure this is up in case someone. Okay, and if you have any questions, because a lot of you are muted, just go ahead and message it to me. Um, so what I'm gonna start with is, that. so now that you know you can pass the test, that's good news, right? Um, next, I'm gonna say things that I noticed that like you definitely 100% need when you're studying for this test. Now, I know it could get really overwhelming, which is why I said, okay, I'm signed up for the test, where do I start? Now, it could be really overwhelming because there's so many amazing resources out there. I could go and print out Rogue ABA's thing. I could go print out like passive, like all free resources that are offered on Facebook group, anything of that sort, and they're, they're awesome. But while you're doing it, it actually, what I found, and if you agree with me, you could go ahead and type to me that you agree, um, that they actually serve as like a really big distraction. So, so let's say like you're trying to look up like, you know, you're like, oh, I want to look up, oh, backward chaining. I think there was a really good link somewhere in the Facebook group. And suddenly, like, you're on, then you start answering questions that you see on the Facebook group. And then you're doing that. And then you're like, you have no idea what's going on because you are attending to so many, like, and then it's like, oh, my God, wait, they put a link to Quizlet. Okay, I'm going to do the Quizlets now real quick. And then you haven't finished chaining or whatever it is. Like, yes, you've answered more questions, but, like, you're not getting through the sessions. 
So, hold on, let's see. Is there any way, does anyone know if there's a way that I could see like everyone's video at the same time or like only shows one person's? It's at the top, I believe. There is um, gallery view. A little bit. Oh, cool. That's way cooler. Okay. Great. Now I can see you guys. So, anyways, hi to those of you I didn't see yet. Um, so, what I was saying is it's really overwhelming. There's so many resources. Um, and so, whatever way you're going to choose to do it, I mean, I'm going to tell you the way I did it, but whatever way you choose to do it, choose it and stick to it. Because in between, it's so easy to see someone else's notes. Like if you would have seen my notes being like, that's it, I'm scratching up everything right now. I'm following, I'm copying past, or I mean, I'm following study notes, ABA, because the way she wrote them. And But like, and I did that the first few times. I was like, okay, I'm going to do this. And then I actually know Then I had a new notebook. Okay, I'm going to start writing in this notebook because this paper is the best. And then I realized, okay, like I'm not getting anywhere. I'm just going to have to stick to one method. So whatever method you choose, stick to it. So that's number one. Um, and we'll get to my method if you want to use it, if you don't, whatever. Um, but if we're talking about things that I wrote a little list over here, my list that I wrote here does not match like the handwriting at all that I use for my Instagram. So I like, hope <laughs> I can read this. Um, you definitely need number one, you need the Cooper textbook. That's like, whether you want to read it or you don't. I personally, I'm not the kind of person who could pick up a book and just like read through the chapters and like, okay, that's nice. So what I used is, I used Pass the Big ABA workbook to guide me through my reading. Because Pass the Big ABA, the way they, they kind of did it from like the foundations to, I don't know how many of you guys have it. Um, but, you know, it starts with like, the foundational knowledge, which, by the way, you might think like, okay, every day in my practice, I'm not using, I, when am I talking about determinism? When am I talking about the basic assumptions? Like blah, 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 blah. I don't care if you use it every day. It's on that test. And you need to know them well because everything else applies to them. This means that you need to understand how you're using determinism on a daily basis. When you're explaining to a mom, when a mom comes up to you and is like, my kid's acting up like this because they had an umbilical cord around their neck when they were a baby, blah, blah, blah. Like, you gotta be like, mm, that's when you gotta come in with like parsimony. Like you need the most simple explanation. Like you're looking at what the antecedent to that behavior is and what the consequence is. You don't care about all these like hypothetical constructs. And if you notice when I'm talking about these things, I'm using all the words from studying and that is exactly what you need to do. You are going to be the most annoying of all your friends. That is for sure. But it doesn't matter because you're going to be more annoying if you don't pass it and you're upset. So no matter what you have to do, live the language, like apply it. Like this science is not like physics or something where you could know it and do whatever. Like you have to talk it. Every question on the test basically is applied. Like there is. The questions, I don't know if anyone else in here who took it already, um, if you could write in the group if you found that the questions were any different than that on the test. Um, I found that they were mainly, I mean, applied. Like there's not really questions of, I mean, it's good for you to know the definitions of things for sure, but you have to be able to apply it. So it's not like Quizlet where you're just matching the front of the card to the back of the card. Like you, like, if I was talking about parsimony and I gave the example of there's a therapist working and the mom's explaining how the kid didn't have uh, air when they were born and blah, 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 but the therapist was looking for the simplest explanation, you could be like, okay, that's parsimony. Um, so that's really important to be able to apply it. And to do that, you've got to live it, talk it, whatever. Um, next, so I had... Passed the big ABA exam, and I started by, I was just writing out everything that's in there. I would rewrite it because for me, um, first of all, I have severe ADHD. I've had it since I was a kid. So for me, like, 
I, I never thought I'd still be in school at this point. I thought like I'd be way done, like just do the minimum of college and I'm done. I didn't think that I'd go to grad school and this and that. So I kind of had to find out what worked for me. So for that, I was like, okay, I'm going to get bored if I'm writing the same thing in like a big pen every day. I love art. I don't have time to do it if I'm studying and working. So here, I'm going to make my notes my art. That's what I'm going to do. So I spend, I don't know how much on different pens. I mean, I've collected pens over time. It's like, I like to pretend like my life's going to get in order. So I have like a lot of planning supplies. <laughs> um, and so, um, yeah, so I had cool pens and that was like what made the stuff more joyful to me. And I would rewrite the stuff at a Pacific ABA. Now in Pacific ABA exam booklet, um, it has, um, like at the front of a section, it tells you like what in the task list is there. So I would go through that, pass the big ABA. Was it easier to write stuff on notebook or flashcards? I did everything in a notebook, but I also did have flashcards only later. And I did it only for things when I took a practice test. If I missed a question, I would, then I would write it on a um, flashcard. But I found that it's good to be able to refer to like an area of your notes. Like if you want to find something about like, you know, like backward chaining with a leap ahead or is it forward chaining with a leap ahead? I think forward chaining, right? With a leap ahead. Backwards. Backwards with a leap ahead. Sorry. That wasn't on my test at all and whatever it is. But you should still know it. I'm not saying you should forget the stuff after the test. But um, then you know where to look for it because it's really annoying if you have note cards and then they're mixed up and whatever. So I found it most useful writing out my notes. Um, then what did I put next? So what I did is I would be going through past the big ABA exam booklet. I didn't really write in it at all. Um, I would do that. And then, like I said, at the front of the section, there, it shows you what task lists are on it. So if you have this, sorry if I'm boring you, but anyone else? You know, I'd be like, okay, here, this has all these, these FKs, whatever. So when I got through that section, it was the most rewarding thing ever. Going to my next thing that you need, your task list, and highlighting them. Okay, so like you gotta have a task list because that's the way that you can know that you went through everything. Then as I'm going through and I'm reading on, let's say the sec the beginning part of Pass the Big ABA, um, it's all about the seven dimensions and whatever. So then that would align with, I would find in the textbook where it was. Um, so let's say that is actually, I think chapter one. And I would read and I would highlight in my book there and I found the past the big ABA like really did hit the main points that you need to know. If you want further examples on something, you could read further and further into Cooper. I mean, I wouldn't say like, don't read Cooper at all and then do just past the big ABA. But that way it would like take me to, I'd be like, okay, now I'm on chapter one. It's, it happens to be, this is what starts past the big ABA and it's the first chapter in Cooper, but it's not always like in order, like the next thing would be two, three, whatever. So I would do that, and then, so that is, look at past the big ABA, align it with the reading. So I would read it as I went. I actually got this really cool, like, book stand to hold it on, because then I could have, like, my past the big ABA, like, in the book holder, and then my Cooper on the table, because it was just, like, too much. Um, so I would do that, and then I had made this for myself. The sheet, let's see if you can see it. It is the Cooper chapter. And I don't know if you know online, you could get the companion quizzes for free on Cooper. So if you go, if you if you just type in like Cooper ABA companion on Google, it will come up. Um, so what I did here, so in each Cooper chapter, you could obviously read it. Then at the back of the chapter, there's like a summary, like bullet points, which I did read some of them, but clearly I wasn't really that into marking it. 
it wasn't reinforcing enough. Um, but then the companion quiz, I would get online. Now, I wouldn't necessarily take the companion quiz as soon as I finished that unit, right? Like, I wouldn't be like, okay, I'm done with chapter one. I'm going to take the companion quiz now. You totally could. But it's actually kind of cool if you do it after you take chapter one after you just finished chapter three. Because we want to see if the stuff is maintaining maintenance, right? Like, it's great that you can answer it right after. Like, sure, after you learn those compound schedules, they are hard to study. You'll know them for that second. Then as soon as you start learning something else, you're like, what the hell is a mixed schedule? What the hell is a concurrent or conjunctive schedule? So I would recommend, I mean, yeah, you could take it and sure, you could take it right after and you could take it like when you read something else a few weeks later. I mean, that's where fluency comes from, right? Like the repetition that we do for all the kids, it's the same thing for us. So I would say, Make yourself something that you're tracking your progress, right? This is all like the self-monitoring of behavior right here. So that's that. Oh, look, it looks like I didn't take these three quizzes, but I did. But um, yeah, and then as you go, you could also feel good because as you get to a chapter, you'll see what the title is, and I just like wrote it in. Then so I slowly added to this. So like this worn piece of paper, like I feel really proud of and I'm not gonna ever throw it away because I worked my ass off for this. So, <laughs> next. So that's what I did to go through Cooper and as I, after I finish a chapter each time, can you guys still hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, I would put a, um, a post-it or a tab, whatever on the side with the label so that I could find it and refer to it easily later on. Now, if you're at the beginning, beginning, beginning of your studies, I would not recommend that you need to be taking a test, like feeling the stress, like, okay, I gotta be taking a practice test right now. Like if you have time and you're at the beginning, I would try to study some stuff because I could tell you, I mean, I know that a lot of these programs offer like these initial tests you could take to see where you're weak, which are fine. And I'm not turning you against anything. Obviously, this is all my opinion. Nothing is like what you should or shouldn't do. But to get that score initially is kind of discouraging. <laughs> At least I, if I were to take a test, you know, before... I started like really actually studying for the test. Like I thought I knew my stuff from going to FIT. I was like, that program is so thorough. And like you do, like FIT is a good program, let's say, I don't know about any, I can't talk for any others. But once you actually start studying, it's like different level. So um, I would say that, where was I going with that? I was talking <laughs> about anyone? I was saying that, I'm so sorry, how did I get, I started reading a note in here. Um, but basically, it's like different level once you start studying this and you get, oh, baseline, thank you. I'm sorry, guys, I told you I have ADHD. Um, so yes, the baseline, it is good in a sense to know where you're weak, but also like once you start studying and you have that time, you're gonna study everything. Even like a basic principle of ABA, like, like, punishment or reinforcement. Yeah, you might know what it is, but when you're studying it to this level for the test, it's different level. So don't like be like, okay, I'm weak over here, so I'm gonna study this. Know that you're gonna study all of it, okay? And maybe when you're going through a part that is easier for you, maybe you'll get done with it quicker, but you're not gonna skip over that because you saw on one practice test that you were strong. Because I don't know if anyone here has either taken the test before, and which I'm sure some people have, and taking practice tests. I found that practice tests from different people were like really different. I mean, of course the questions were different, but like the types of questions, whether you took like an FIT test or you took RhinoPaw or I don't, some other ones I paid, I don't even know. But um, they were really different. That is best paper, it's 99 question bank. 
What's oh, that? she she was asking for the manual. Oh, okay. So I was explaining no, that the pack is from the yeah, pasta the prep book. I know it's annoying paying for all the stuff, but I would say that they really did put everything in here. Um, and so those baseline things could be discouraging. I would say get yourself studying a little at least. Get yourself, I would say, get through that beginning stuff, which seems like, okay, this can't be on the test that much. Like this is not applied at all in what I'm doing. But, like you need to know, you need to know those seven dimensions and you need to know the six assumptions and you need to know the differences between respondent and operant behavior backwards and forwards. So what I mean by that is you need to be able to, and by the way, in future sessions, if anyone ever wants to do a future session, when we actually start learning stuff, I'm happy to make sure that you do know the stuff backwards and forwards because I could give you cool ways. Cause like I said, for me, it was hard studying things. So, I'm happy to share that. I'm happy to share my notes I have, whatever you need. Um, which most of it is outlined from Passive ABA, maybe more beautiful, but um, yes. So I have that. And I would say that you need to, hmm. okay, this is what I wrote over here. If you have kids, forget about them. If you have a relationship, just forget it. <laughs> <laughs> no I'm kidding, kind of. Um, I was like definitely annoying uh, to my fiance. Like I was like, get up, I like, need to do this. Cause like any second you have, you're feeling like the stress, like you gotta be studying it. But I promise the freedom after it is so good. Um, it's a delayed reinforcer, but it's so worth it. Um, now, I already told you that you need to live the science, like live it. Talk it. If you see yourself doing something, if you see a kid's behavior popping back up, be like, oh, that's spontaneous recovery. Or, oh, that's a, right after it happens, like we just put this thing on extinction, that's an extinction burst. Oh, look, this ends in 10 minutes. Hmm. Okay, well, how long have I been talking? Let's see. Oh, so I have to upgrade it. I think he gave you an hour. I believe. Okay, well, I've been talking for a while. Every, everyone might be sick of me yet already. I don't know. Um, let's see. I also want to answer anyone's questions. Um, like I said, be sure to stick to whatever method you choose. Like, notice that everyone's going to have a different method than you, but it's really important that you stick to whatever method you do, or else, like, if you try switch mid-thing to doing just people's Quizlets or like, let's say you've been writing out flashcards the whole time and suddenly you're like, I'm not gonna do them anymore, I'm just gonna use Quizlets. Which, I guess that could be a little different because you're kind of still using flash, but I mean, if you were doing it because you need to be the one to write it out, don't suddenly switch on once you get to like mid task list and then like, if you find something that's working for you, do it. You know, like I would say that I got the laziest on the ethics at the end. And pass the big ABA, ethics is at the end. And I was like, okay, like I've done enough. Like I'm, I'm over it. Um, and it's pretty obvious, but like, which I'm not saying you should do that. But, and that's why if I didn't pass the test, I was like, okay, it's because of the ethics. Because like they asked like, like it was like, they, it was kind of like, you need to know the specific order. Like if it's, if they're asking you, if someone's presenting themselves as a, as a BCBA, what do you do first? Like for me, I'm like, okay, I know you need to tell the person, like you can't be doing that. And I know you need to report it, but like the important part was first, you know? So don't do something that you're going to get lazy for like the net, let, like find something if it works, keep yourself motivated. If you need to put yourself on like a momentary time sample that the timer goes off every five minutes, if you were on task, that you're gonna buy yourself something, do it, live it. Make it like, that's how you have to do it. You need to apply ABA to your entire life. Now hold on. Now this ends in a couple minutes, but I'm willing to upgrade it for you guys. This is me paying it forward, literally. Um, <laughs> Uh-huh. I'm funny too. I forgot to tell you that. Um, okay. 
hold on. So if you wanna stay, if you wanna hang up your board, you're satiated with me, I get it. I don't care, go for it. Um, I'm adding this in right now so that I could stay for anyone who wants to ask me questions of any sort. Um, and if you would be interested in future sessions, let me know because, hold on, it's asking me my state. I won't be this distracted. Hold on. Ugh, go away. Okay. If it is something that you would like to do, like have a session in the future, let me know what days work best for people. And why is this not working? This is annoying. I don't want to lose everyone. Please allow pop ups, and I'm sorry, guys, one second. It might just restart and probably can click back the link and I think you can go back in. I believe. Can you go back in? I think so. I think it's been resetting because it's a free account. Wait, it's saying that I have a ad blocker, so I can't. So guys. Okay, let's try all go back in. If you want. If you're bored again, no pressure to stay. Nothing personal here. Okay, I'm gonna hang up and I'm gonna answer any questions and come back into the same link I sent you.